put it on this computer. All right. Hey, Jalen, thanks so much for giving me a few minutes of, of your time. Um, just wanted to kind of catch up here a little bit on the, the draft process and what's it's been like. What since since AM's Pro Day, what have you uh, been up to? What's that process been like? And and kind of what's been your your routine uh, from from then till now? Yeah, so pretty much I've just been um, working out, working out, and um, taking Zoom calls, taking um, visits with different teams, you know, and uh, going to see their facilities. Um, yeah, getting on the phone with different guys, stuff like that. So it's been exciting, but it's also been hectic as well. Just because you never, you don't know, you you don't have a clear answer, and um, that's some. It's not like college recruiting. College recruiting, I get to choose what school. Now they get to choose me, and then you don't know what round, what pick, you don't know. So, um, but it's very exciting though. It's very exciting. I'll say that. Yeah. Is there any aspects of the college recruiting process that at least kind of prepares you for for this process? Um, I definitely say talking to the coaches, like going to see different places. Um, I'll say when I went to university, I took a visual visit to the University of Miami and seeing their facilities, their, 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 their big and great facilities. It was just, uh, it's kind of shocking to me. So when I, when I went to go see uh, Dallas or when I went to see Buffalo, um, I was, it was a little bit better for me because I seen uh, big facilities like that. You know, A&M's facility is uh, second to none and uh, same with Dallas and same with Buffalo. So. Yeah, for sure. When you were younger, uh, you know, high school, middle school, did you did you see yourself in this position? Honestly, I did. And my parents saw it, too. Um, I just didn't. It didn't really hit me that it, it's it, it's coming it's like it's, it's coming as fast as it would be. Um, as I went along through college, it was like um, maybe one day I get to go to the league, maybe one day, one day I get to go to the league. And then it's that time to declare. And then it's like. Um, okay, may, then I'm definitely going to leave. I'm definitely going to the league. But now it's actually starting to hit me that it's draft week. And this week I will be drafted to a certain team. I will be an NFL player on a, on a team, which is insane to me. Yeah. Is, is that, is this process been like you imagined it when you were a kid? What's, what's been like you thought it would be and what's different? Honestly, when I was a kid, I didn't even think about, I didn't even, I didn't watch a lot of NFL football. But when I started to, uh, I saw the draft and stuff like that. And I was just like, uh, I did not think it was going to be like this. Um, it's, it's, it's not as easy as, as it may seem just because you're talking to so many people and you're, uh, you're do it's a job interview for 32 teams. It's a job interview and you got to take 32 job interviews and uh, you got to show your talents and you got to show uh, your knowledge for the game and your worth. And there's so much more aspects that go into it rather than what I thought as, as a kid watching it on TV. For sure. Um, so what's your plans for the weekend? Um, what, what, are, what are you doing with your family to, to watch and, and be ready? Yeah, I'll be in, I'll be in my hometown, Diggison, and um, me and my family and close friends will be watching it from, uh, from home. Cool. And cool. I'll definitely like to spend that, uh, that moment with them. Yeah, cool. Um, how would you describe your last season at A&M individually? What did you learn about yourself? Um... I definitely say preparation is key. You know, I didn't have I I could I could say that I didn't have the preparation I wanted to going into the season just because of the the injury that I had to sit out for, and um, I didn't know if it have an effect on me during the season, effect on me or not. Um, I know one thing I learned in the season is always to focus on the little things, which is something I might have forgot throughout my success through college. Um, the little things like watching the ball in, and those some that's something I didn't do as much as during the season. That's why I had uh, eight drops this season, mm -hmm. you know? And um, just the little things like that, that, that uh, experienced player like myself would just forget going through, you have to remember. And that's something that, that's why the NFL guys are NFL guys. That's why they're, they're still in the NFL playing for a long time because they always remember the little things. And that's something that uh, through this season, I had to work back up to the little things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. do, do you feel like in, in your, your first two seasons, you got the, the, the tape that you needed and a little bit last year as well? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, uh, I definitely, I could definitely say that um, the NFL, they know, they know who I am. They know what kind of player I am. They know my versatility on and off the field. They know who I am off the field in terms of family, uh, my dog, um, the kind of person I am, and they know my knowledge for the game. And so I definitely say that, uh, yeah, they know exactly who I am. So. Uh, let my tape do the speaking. If not, then 
you can ask anybody around me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, um, w- w- when you look at, at, at your, your season and, and some of the things last year that you were talking about, uh, the details and you look at maybe, uh, the pro day numbers, I think I saw an article about you or something talking about a redemption tour. Is that, is that what you kind of feel like a little bit of this, this time has been to, to talk about, um, um, the ways that you've become a better player through this last few months? I'm sorry. What do you mean? You said the redemption tour. Yeah, like in, in talking to these guys, do you feel like this is has been a little bit of a a, a, a time to to um, reinforce the kind of player that you are uh, leading up to this draft? Oh yeah, for sure. And the the pro day numbers uh, they are they are what they are. You know, mm-hmm. um, I I spoke my piece with the pro day and uh, to the NFL and and honestly and obviously you can see on film and, and you can see in my tape that I am faster than a five flat and the NFL knows it, the media knows it. So honestly, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And um, and people put so much on the 40 yard dash and stuff like that. Fall player is a fall player. Mm-hmm. And they they can they know by my film and my production through the last three years in the SEC that I'm a football player. Mm-hmm. And I'm the best, I'm the best at it. That's what I say. And if if I didn't say that, then I wouldn't be a, a real competitor. Right. So yeah. Right. What what was your what was the highlight of your career at AM? What do you feel like was the the, the best moment, your favorite part? I'd never say beating Alabama, mm-hmm. beating Alabama this past season. You know, uh, out, out of after losing to Arkansas and Mississippi State, and then Mississippi State at home, it was just so it was just so of such of a low part of the season. You know, that's you lose two games in the uh, college football or even in the SEC, you are not going to make playoffs. And we had playoff hopes, and so we we're like, okay, how do we redeem ourselves to get a great bowl game or a really good bowl game? Well, we got number one Alabama coming in. We just lost to Mississippi State. Mississippi State and Arkansas, how are we going to fix that? And we did that whole preparation, that whole week of preparation was just work, 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 work. We all pushed ourselves to the limit. Coach pushed ourselves, pushed us to the limit. And um, and, the, and we wanted to get the fans a show because they, the last two games were, were unacceptable of us losing that game. game. So um, we, did it, we did it for the fans. We also did it for ourselves too, the Alabama win. Sure, sure. Let, let's shift gears just real quick. I know two offensive guys that are high on a lot of people's boards are Kenyon and Isaiah. What can you tell me about those guys and and uh, what they'll bring to their their NFL teams when they when they get their names called? I'll definitely say about Kenyon first. Kenyon Green is very versatile. Can play any position on the offensive line. That makes him very valuable in the eyes of the NFL. Um, strong and a great leader. Great leader will push will push anybody. Will bring up young guys like our our young offensive line that we had this year. He brought them up and brought them together. Me and him brought brought them up and brought them together so we so they can learn the stuff fast and learn the stuff faster. Learn trade blocks and and B's and A's and C's and stuff like that. So I would say definitely about him as a great leader, uh, a great person on and off the field. Has a great family and is a baller. Isaiah, oh, same thing with him. His family's great. He's a baller. I, I saw you can see the. Um, that evolution of him from freshman year to junior year. I know like freshman year, the dude was the dude was a really good ball player. He, from to junior year, he was a really great ball player. I mean, the dude got faster, the dude got stronger in the in the locker room. He was a leader. Um the dude, he did everything he was supposed to do. And he did it to a high level. And I will say he's gonna be a great, a great player for the, whichever NFL team uh, picks him. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what discussions? I know you mentioned Buffalo. I know you mentioned Dallas. What teams have you had discussions with? And do you have an idea where you might go? Who might take you? How do you kind of feel lead, com, coming into uh, uh, this weekend? Yeah. And so the thing about it is, I don't know. Um, I've had a team. I've had conversations with probably every team so far, and uh, maybe two that I haven't. Two teams that I haven't. But I can't put. I can't say I'm going to go to this team. I'm going to go to that team. Because they're all showing interest, but you never know, mm-hmm. you know. Like I talked to past players, and they said, "Oh, they were oh this this team seemed more interested in me than this team, but this team got, me. you know." And so, yeah. So that's the hard thing about this about this process. You never know which team you're going to, and that goes from first rounder to a seventh rounder. Mm-hmm. And in between, you never know which team you're going to. So unless you're like the first three picks, so. Is- is Dallas and Buffalo the two places that you travel to? Have you gone gone to other places? Yeah, I went to Duff, I went to uh, Dallas and Buffalo. Gotcha. Did you did you grow up a Cowboys fan? I know you didn't watch a lot of NFL. You said no. I actually grew up a Patriots fan. Oh, there you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Tom Tom Brady. 
that's that's what it is in Grunk. There you go. There you go. Um, uh, two, two more for you. Talk about the decision to, to, to go ahead and declare for the draft and leave early. Um, what went into that decision and, and, and how, how heavy of a decision was that for you? Yeah, so it was, definitely wasn't an easy decision at all. Um, I definitely say that, and I give props to NIL for helping me getting, for transitioning into like becoming a, well, having no money in college and then uh, the transition between college and NFL in terms of money wise. And um, I can say that definitely helped me with saving it a financial advisor because in a few weeks I'm going to get drafted, get paid and stuff like that. And I did, I'm glad that I had that gap in between. And I would definitely say about uh, the transition from moving to the NFL, I would say definitely was a, a conversation between my, my parents, my agent, my family, um, and my coaches. And my coaches felt like it was time for me to, uh, that it's time for me to take my, uh, play to the next level and my parents did and my agent did so I was like you know what I'm ready to go and I had to have a conversation with myself as well and ask myself am I ready to go into a locker room with grown men and uh, uh, play and I said I'm a grown man myself so I got, I'm, I know I can play with these cats so that's what I got to go do yeah I know you mentioned NIL I want to inject one more in here what was your favorite NIL deal this year did you have a favorite is it is that something you think about that you're like hey that was that was fun or really cool I didn't have a favorite, but I would say just the whole experience was just amazing, you know, and it came kind of fast. Uh, I want to say it happened July 1st of, the, of 2021. And um, when it happened, calls from agents, blah, 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 this, that, this, that. And I started doing deals and started seeing fans and do mean greets. And uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And uh, it definitely helped me and my family's financial situation. For sure. For sure. Do you know, Ballpark, how many deals you did? Um, 10 to 15, maybe. Wow. That's awesome. It was, uh, yeah, it was a, we did a select group. We didn't want to take every, every deal, but we did a select group. That's cool. That's cool. And we'll close it out with this. Who's been the most influ influential person in getting you to this point this weekend? My parents, my Why parents, uh, seeing, seeing my dad wake up at four o'clock in the morning and get home at nine o'clock at night every day, uh, was just inspiration to me. Um, my mother, same thing. My mother, my mother had three jobs at one point, you know, and um, they just did whatever they could to provide for me and my my seven siblings, you know, and they worked their tail off. Uh, and one day and hopefully soon I will be able to retire them and give them the financial freedom that they that they want. And um, that's really what drives me to get to the spot I am today.